Welcome to A Course in Business Miracles. This is Heather Dominic, creator of businessmiracles.com and founder and leader of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. Join me today for some genuine practical assistance and a business altering and life changing experience. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode number 63, False Safety. In this episode, you'll learn the clear warning signs that alert you to the act of abandoning yourself for what you think is safety, but is actually only the low-level misery you come to know as normal. This is a must-listen-to episode and a crucial first step to take if you desire to thrive as a highly sensitive entrepreneur. This is Access to a Business Miracle. As a highly sensitive, if you're comparing yourself to the other 80%, you will always be wrong and you will always not be enough because you can never be who they are. Your system is not wired to do so. But what's really important here, because today we're going to be looking at the HSE coping cycle. So what's important about this is that we have come to associate the feelings of being wrong or the feelings of being not enough, we've come to associate that with being safe. And if that feels like a stretch to you, then I'll say this at least, you've come to associate being wrong or being not enough with being comfortable. If you didn't, then you wouldn't need a coping mechanism. It becomes so automatic to beat ourselves up that it literally feels unsafe to not do so. And it's become so automatic to beat ourselves up that that creates a pattern that makes business success very difficult, or if nothing else, it makes business success feel threatening, which Kristen was speaking to earlier. So every time we are triggered into our HSE coping mechanism, we are abandoning ourselves. We are abandoning that true self. Are you willing to be who you are? So it's a coming back to self. Thank you. Because when we are in our HSE coping mechanism, we have abandoned ourselves. And this shows up differently for pushers or hiders. A pusher will abandon themselves by feeling very frantic right, will not have any free space or time, will have a to-do list and almost be addicted to getting that to-do list done, will not slow down, will pile on projects to make sure that there's no possibility or room to even slow down, will experience injuries, sickness, and keep working through them. Linnell and I were talking about this as two recovering pushers. We were talking about this at a team dinner and talking about experiences that we had back in our lives and careers when we were pushers. And I said to her, you know, one of the things that when I was really pushing, I would get sick all the time. And Linnell was like, well, I don't know if I really got sick. And she's like, you know what? I did get sick, but I just kept working. And I was like, oh, yeah, me too. (laughs) I mean, I didn't stay home. No way. And when I worked as a high school drama teacher, I pretty much got sick with every production because I believed that the only way I could get that production done was to fully push to the 
point where my body just broke down. Also, as a pusher, it'll show up. The rebel will show up a lot as the pusher. You can't make me. I'm going to do my own thing. Even when that own thing is destructive to self, the pusher will often feel hurt by the fact that others don't acknowledge how hard they're working. Can't you see how much I'm working here? Can't you see how hard I'm working? And here's the thing. An 80 percenter will never see it because that's a natural, more natural state for them. They don't understand the toll that it's taking on you. And a pusher will come to something like a training retreat and say basically internally, like, prove it to me. Prove it to me. And then a hider, a hider is going to take anger and take it inward and hold it in. And it's an imploding type of experience. The hider is all about avoidance. The hider is also a rule follower and a people pleaser. The hider will do for others before she, he does for herself. The hider works really hard to control, to create that safety. And the hider is operating under a lot of fear. And the hider will come to something like a training retreat and say, can you just give me the notes and then I'll go back to my room and I'll do it there. And please don't call on me. And the combo platter, as I said before, is back and forth between the two. And that is a massive act, not just of self-abandonment, but self-torture. And very difficult to make any movement forward because it's as if you are pressing the gas and the brake of a car at the same time. And I remember when I learned how to drive, it was back in the day when there was still stick shifts, which I miss. And I remember being in the parking lot of the community college in my hometown with my father. And I'm (laughs) looking to like switch the shift. And so not only do you have a gas and a brake, but you've got a clutch. So I was looking to shift gears and I had my foot on the gas and but couldn't quite get the shift because I didn't have my foot on the clutch and the car was just going like this and it just wasn't stopping. And as being the highly sensitive child that I was, my father is saying, put your foot on the brake. And I'm like, what is the car doing? (laughs) Like, put your foot on the brake, but what is it doing? (laughs) And I wanted to understand. (laughs) But he was like, can you just stop first? (laughs) And that is what I always think of with the combo platter. Just put your foot on the brake so you can at least just stop and breathe, and connect, and then put your foot on the gas so that you can go forward. But obviously that was a very visceral moment in learning to drive, and it's always like that when you're in combo platter. It is torturous. Deep breath in, and let it out. So it doesn't really matter if you are a hider or a pusher or a combo platter. The only mattering is that it helps you to more clearly understand how you tend to react, how you default. 
I really want to emphasize that one is not better than another, and one is not worse than another. So please don't find yourself sitting here and being like, oh, God, I wish I was just a pusher. <laughs> oh, geez, if I could just, if I could be part of that club, it would just, oh, it'd be so much better. None of them are of service. It is, again, simply about the reaction, what you tend to, to understand it so that we can change it. And as part of understanding it is then to understand how the superego voice shows up. Because the superego voice is going to show up differently for a pusher than a hider, than a combo platter. But it is going to show up. So we want to understand that so we can choose differently. Because as I said yesterday, and I'm sure you've heard me say before, no matter how much information you take on, it is never going to quell the superego voice, ever. So you could become an expert in marketing videos. And if you're a pusher, you will push your way through to make sure that you get a perfect marketing video out every single week. And that super ego voice will be raging through all of it and you will be exhausted and you will not be in your true self, which means you will not be fully client attractive and you will wonder why and how as you are getting these videos out, are they not doing what they're supposed to be doing? And if you're a hider, you can take that course on video marketing and you will absolutely perfect those videos. You will know everything that you need to do to get a video done from A to Z. And you will probably never actually get a video fully created. And if you do, you won't put it up and you won't put it out online because there's going to be one more thing that's going to need to change about it. So it doesn't matter. What matters is how do you show up to the video marketing course? Are you able to be in a place where the super ego voice is quelled and instead we're able to access the sweetheart spirit voice? We're able to access self-kindness and then we're able to create from that place, which is our space, of being in the HSE strength of creativity, which then we are our true self. And then we are very client attractive. And it doesn't matter if the video is one minute longer than it's supposed to be. And it doesn't matter if maybe you said the wrong word at the end of the video, or it doesn't matter if maybe the copy on the last video screen has a typo in it. Because you are so able to be in that HSE strength, to be able to be your true self, to be able to be that ultimate client attractive, that your sacred contracts will respond. They won't notice that it's one minute longer than it's supposed to be. They won't notice the typo. Or if they do, they won't care. And so that is where we go. Deep breath in and let it out. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Course in Business Miracles. If you're ready to learn how to use your highly sensitive abilities to support you in being purposeful, profitable, and empowered rather than scattered, poor, and undervalued, Take my free self quiz to find out if you are indeed a highly sensitive entrepreneur. And if you are, along with your quiz results, you'll receive my free HSE success guide, which will teach you how to have your highly sensitive abilities working for you to create the results you desire in your business. Take the quiz and receive your free success guide now at www.hsequiz.com.